What's up folks, it's Medieval, and today we're going to be talking about Outward, the RPG that very well may have taken the niche RPG community that these games cater to by storm. From start to finish this is a game that completely makes you forget that it's made by only 10 developers. The potential of hours you can get from this game definitely makes it well worth it. It's also a game that really gives you a breath of fresh air as far as the genre goes. And the storyline splits into three different parts, being faction based for the past to go down with the holy mission of Ilad, hell yeah, the heroic kingdom of Levant, and the blue collective making up the choices. Class wise we've got a total of 8 with 3 being able to be specialized into but the nice thing is that you can actually grab all of the passives from the other skill trees too and some actives as well. The combat ends up reminding you of a lot of the older games like the ones from the Fable franchise, the Gothic series, Risen, Kings of Amalar, Elix, etc. If you're familiar with those games you'll probably get some of those vibes in this one as well. And without any further delay let's go ahead and jump right into it after these messages. This video is also sponsored by eneba.com, a new digital gaming marketplace that aims to sell some of the hottest games coming to the market at affordable and fair prices. Outward just so happens to be one of the games they are currently selling global keys for and a 3% discount code can be offered to you using the code SIRMEDIEVAL at checkout. Follow the link in the description to also get one free euro towards your purchase for free. Highly recommend checking it out, there's a lot of different games you can actually purchase on there including the Mountain Blade Collection which would be really nice. But thanks so much and back to the review. Hope you enjoy it. Starting off with the questing and storyline of Outward, this will last you anywhere from 25 to 40 hours main story wise. can highly recommend you taking your time with this one because it'll be far better to spread it out as long as possible to prevent quick burnout. There are side quests you'll want to pick up and do along the way such as taking out the bandit fortress in the starting zone before they eventually end up sacking the town. The game itself presents real consequences for failing to complete a task like that for example. If you're a part of the blue collective and embark on the quest to make peace with the giants for instance, you might find yourself fighting the king if your words aren't picked carefully. Losing a fight against them at that point would banish you from the giant area forever too. There's a couple other quests that present different rewards and outcomes based on the character choices you make as well. This makes for great replayability of the game and allows for mistakes to be learned and expanded upon, especially in the newer games you play through legacy mode that allow you to pass down items and skills to your other characters. Though at the moment you can also just split screen with both characters and also drop stuff that way, either way would actually end up working too. Next up for the game we also have the co-op, the part that heavily enhances the gameplay experience and also a function that the game is built around. We don't usually get a lot of RPG experiences like this where we can enjoy and play these games normally but also have the option of either jumping into or having someone else join the fun with that progress being saved and brought back to your own original save game progression wise. When you join someone else's co-op game in Outward, no matter what you do in it, once you're done you'll be able to bring back any items you obtained, any skills you learned, or loot you found back to your own game. The only thing that happens is that if you do the main storyline the only character that gets that progressed is the main character. But other than that this is a very good tool for helping players do campaign, trading, expanding the longevity of the gameplay session, etc. There's all kinds of things you can do with this one. I can highly recommend trying that if you do decide to play Outward, that you try out the co-op experience at least once. It's honestly one that would only enhance your time with it. And with it being freeform you can join other people's games at will to help them whenever you want. There's also a matchmaking channel on the Discord for people to get more interaction in terms of RP, trading, and fighting, etc. One thing to keep in mind is that the game does not currently feature crossplay. The game can be played and connected to from the Steam launcher to the Epic Game launcher if you use that one or the other, but in terms of trying to play between systems it's not possible from what we've seen. Though some people say that you might be able to play from Xbox to PC though. As far as we know though, playing between PC and PS4 can't be done, but maybe that'll be something to look forward to in the future alongside more mods for the game and content updates slash expansions. Something that can be said about the game's issues is that although it was running smooth and steady for the most part, there would be times where the FPS would stutter for no reason and sometimes cause your character to do a complete 180, maybe in the middle of a fight even which really sucked. The game also had a few game breaking bugs during its early stages in which you could actually lose your backpack with everything in it upon death. Very scary scenario considering how much we rely on something like that too. This has since been patched out but it could still be happening to some people. In some cases people even did experience backpack disappearance due co-op games, but I found that if you end up dying a few more times in that scenario you should find it. The game itself may start off slow and harder to get into with the feeling of a heavy punishment upon mistakes made but over time you'll learn to get used to it. There's also a couple different issues you might come across like being stuck in specific places where your character can't move until he fixes it or dies, having loot disappear from corpses etc. Despite these issues though even if you do encounter them, I can sincerely recommend the game for the 40 bucks to be tried at least once and for that price you could do a lot worse. Hopefully in the future we'll see more content added to this game in one way or another. 
There may not be too much coming from the modders depending on how much freedom they have with the engine, but this is a game that really leaves you wanting more by the end of it. Also watch out for one shot builds because once you get in one, it might end the game faster for you. If you do get that feeling as well, for instance if you're just one shotting everything, make sure to try out the legacy mode to pass things down to your next character too. And with that, thank you all so much for watching this review, plus I hope it helped you on making a decision for the game. And have a good night or day folks, and farewell.